Peace. What's good? How y'all doing? Uh, this is Zaza Ali. Let me see. Hopefully my webcam is showing up. Okay, yes, there I am. Peace and love. How y'all doing? This is Zaza Ali. Today is Wednesday, August the 21st. Um, I pray that this message reaches you all in the best of health, spirit, and mind. I'm doing well. I am a little, um, I'm fasting right now. So today is, let's see, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, today's day five. I'm actually, I started doing a raw fast and um, in these past couple of days, I've been eating like a banana a day. So really, you know, very little um, food in my body. I just made myself eat a couple of minutes ago so that I can muster up the energy be able to be able to do this uh, this video for you guys, um, <clears throat> which I've been talking about doing for some time now. Um, but just bear with me. If I seem a little lethargic or if my voice cracks, um, it's because I'm fasting. And um, like I said, I, I wasn't even hungry this morning, but I forced myself to eat. I have been talking about doing this video for some time now, and I kind of shied away from it or held off on it because... Number one, I don't ever want to seem uh, or come off to be as anti-female, anti-woman, anti-black woman. Um, it always puzzles me how people see me. Um, I don't do anything based on how people see me, obviously. Um, so some people think I'm, you know, I've been called anti-female, anti-male, hate black men. You know, I'm always criticizing black women, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and it's very puzzling to me because one thing I always strive to do is to be balanced. And my uh, striving for balance is what has kept me away from actually doing this video up until this time, because again, I don't wanna be seen as anti-woman or as anti-female. I am extremely excited and happy for all of the women and sisters who are making strides and you know winning in their own uh, particular way. So it's, you know, it's kind of a conundrum to come and talk about this type of thing because it's hard to do without appearing as if that what that is what the actual situation is. But when I juxtapose what I see um, happening in the culture, the culture of women, and then, you know, Black American culture, and then, you know, society in general, um, it's incumbent upon me um, to talk about this. Um, I have young, a lot of girls and women that I'm in contact with all around the world um, who reach out to me and ask me for guidance, who are struggling to find their way. Um, so this video is for them. And this video is for the culture. And this video is for all of the women who came before me and who came before us um, who could have took a lot of different routes in their life, whether it was as queens or as, you know, women who were getting on slave ships, avoiding capture and jumping off, um, or who were captured and ended up jumping off in order to, you know, prevent being slaves, um, to the women who covered down on their men during this era of slavery and Jim Crow and, you know, the long line of plethora of women who could have taken routes that compromised themselves and didn't and stuck to the grain and stuck to a higher purpose within themselves even if it was it was for their own self accountability this video is for them as well as all of the young sisters who i see on social media sticking their tongues out and sticking their behinds in the camera breasts in the camera um parading themselves for attention this video is for you there we go and I'm going to take me off for a moment. So toxic femininity, part one, the whole frequency. Um, although I would love to have a different <clears throat> word to use outside of whole, unfortunately, there is no other appropriate word to discuss um, the culture and the climate and the, and the behavior that I'm going to address um, today. So if that word makes you feel uneasy, I understand. The behavior makes me feel even more uneasy and the effect that this culture is having on our daughters makes me feel even more uneasy so i'm hoping that you guys will be able to bear with me through the um you know the logistics of the language um the things that i have to cover here so toxic femininity um i don't know exactly who coined the term to toxic masculine masculinity um 
I read an article about this before and I didn't really look a lot into it. And, you know, a couple people have hit me up and just talking about the term toxic masculinity and it's supposed to fall under a certain umbrella, people who have an agenda. I get that, um, but I also know that toxic masculinity is a real thing. And I'm gonna talk about that in the second part of this video, not this video, but part two um, of this particular conversation. Um, but for me, toxic femininity um, fully embodies what I want to underscore and convey with the behavior that I see um, and the mindset and the culture that I'm seeing right now. And not only you know, the women who are while and off the hook the women who i'm going to talk specifically about but even this you know we're in the midst of this women's rights movement feminist movement you know everybody gung-ho about correcting the ills that women have faced and rightfully so but i don't see a real full-fledged conversation when it comes to women and our accountability and responsibility for not only our behavior but the bigger role that we play in the world that we've given birth to. So toxic femininity part one, the whole frequency is what we are going to build on today. Let me grab a drink of water. I have my frequency music playing in the background to kind of temper my, my energy. Topics of discussion today, uh, your favorite female rapper. And another thing that really kind of, you know, nudged me to do this video is that whole, controversy with Jermaine Dupri and you know people jumping on his back because of what he said about how you know the rap all the rap songs sound like strippers you know and people it was like I get what people are saying as far as him being able to produce other rappers but what he said was true and if you actually listen to the radio and what you know the songs that are playing on the radio it is very low vibration it's very promiscuous and it's very sexual in nature. Um, so J Jermaine Dupri was right and exact. And one thing that I was looking for from the, the rappers, you know, because when he said that there was a lot of sisters that came forward like, um, excuse me, no, there, it's not only, you know, strippers, we're here, you know, we've been here, et cetera, et cetera. But I was really looking for some of them to, they didn't have to point any names out, but just really have a conversation with the culture and say, you know, we respect every woman's right to, you know, express herself how she feels. Um, this certain type of behavior is not really good for the culture. That's what I've been sitting back and waiting to see. That's what I've been sitting back and waiting to hear from somebody. This behavior is not good for the culture. I was waiting for one of the sisters, and I know it's a, you know, it's a catch-22 because they're still, you know, they these are their peers, right? They're still trying to get put on or they still, you know, Nobody wants the social media backlash, trust me, I know. Um, but I, I just, I kind of was a little bit disappointed, but it's all good, because um, I'm gonna talk about it today. So your favorite female rapper, excuse me, um, assembly line characters for programming, chemical and mental programming, and we're gonna talk about sexual hormones and discipline, and then womanhood and reframing the narrative on what that word actually means. Part two of this video that I hope to put on YouTube, and that's going to depend on a certain number of factors, will be toxic masculinity, the whole frequency part two. And we're going to talk in that video about breaking the buck. Um, and the buck, for those of you guys who don't know, is the systematic uh, agenda that the slave masters had, or slave owners, I should say. I hate to use the word master when it comes to that period of time. But the process of breaking the man's spirit um, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, and physically, and then turning him into basically a baby producing machine um, and what that entailed and how we can actually see that in today's culture with a lot of the people that we, you know, not we, but our culture idolize, um, that process and that behavior is still prevalent in our culture today just in a different capacity sex trafficking i was very disappointed me being here in atlanta um and atlanta being the self sex trafficking mecca which is predominantly black i don't think there's any um you know i don't think that's a a coincidence um i was very disappointed that during the atlanta super bowl while we had all this black star power here that none of our actors actresses rappers, singers, et cetera, use it as a 
as a platform or as a time to um, really kind of underscore the gravity of this situation. And again, you know, I, I, I know they all, you know, have lives to live and that may not be their particular agenda, but you know, it would be nice if we had one or two people that actually took this type of stuff seriously, particularly um, in their homeland. Um, pimps up, holes down. Black people in America love a good pimp. Um, still trying to figure that out, but we're going to talk about that too. Africa beneath the surface. Um, you know, I think that while we are obviously reconnecting our roots to Africa and rightfully so, while we are looking back at history and giving Africa her just due, while we are looking at the natural resources and the abundance that is in Africa and that has always been in Africa, rightfully so, there is a lot of things in Africa that do not get talked about by any of us particularly in Black America. Um, and, you know, we're seeking refuge in Africa, at least to a spiritual and a mental, you know, extent, emotional extent. So we're seeking refuge there. And I know that has a lot to do with, you know, us not really talking about the reality, but there's places in Africa where African men are marrying child brides. You know what I'm saying? So we're going to talk about that. Um, and then we're going to talk about sexual, the sexualizing of black boys, which is a huge problem with black America. Um, I talked in my second book, um, uh, Plagues of Dysfunction. Um, I gave the example of Lil Wayne and Chris Brown, how both of them were, um, you know, turned out early by older women or by the, the brothers and the men in their community that were charged with their well-being. Um, both of them started to be sexualized at very young ages and both of them have, you know, in different ways kind of branched out and had their own dysfunctions that have kind of played out in the media. So I want to talk about that as well. And then hip hop and rap culture. Um, I thought a lot, I'm a big hip hop fan. You know, obviously I'm from Oakland. I grew up under, you know, Too Short, which was very pimp pimp Mac type music. Um, and that was, you know, prevalent in the culture at that time. Um, Dog Pound, Snoop Dogg, um, NWA, you know, I didn't really come into a lot of East Coast music until later on down the line. I grew up on Bay Area artists, um, Spice One, you know, Mac Mall, things like that. Um, so I was pretty much more privy to California music, but as in my late teens, I started to, you know, kind of branch out and get um, a taste of a broader span of music. So that, you know, definitely helped to improve my, my mindset as far as the culture. But when we look at rap, rap and hip hop music today, in general, it is not female friendly. And I'm not talking about female rappers. I'm talking about the men, favorite rappers, right? All of them, when you really, really fine tune the music, you know, there's some conversation about, you know, um, a certain type of woman or how they play women or how they handle women. Every now and then you'll hear something positive about mom or about grandmother or about the women in their family. But overall, the culture of hip hop, as far as what the m music that our men produce is not very um, uplifting and inspiring and edifying to women. So we're going to talk about that in part two of toxic masculinity, the whole frequency. And that video, that presentation will be much like this presentation. So real quick, let's talk about the business of this situation because if you guys have been watching my content, you know, um, or if you watch my recent videos, I took down recently 248 videos of me that I've been continuously putting out content for the past um, six years online specifically. I have over, had over three, at that point I had three million um, plus views on my two YouTube channels, um, which is a beautiful thing. I, you know, like to sit down and actually put together, well put together, well formatted content that makes you think, that you can learn from, that's engaging, um, that has different mediums and different perspectives that go beyond just what I think, right? It's cool for me to sit down and just talk to you guys and tell you what's on my mind, but that's not really what I'm here for. I'd like to really do full presentations and put up high quality content like this. This takes time. It takes energy. The audience that has frequented my work for the past six years has not promoted me or, excuse me, not promoted, supported me reciprocal. It just is what it is. I'm not complaining about it or anything. I'm saying, if you want me to continue to put up this type of content, I don't understand how people can love you and not support you. 
that's that doesn't really calculate compute in my mind because the people that i love i support i love my people i've been continuously supporting my people right so i am releasing today in conjunction with this <clears throat> excuse me let me drink some water i'm trying not to drink too much because i don't want to have to keep going to the restroom i'm releasing in conjunction with this video um the science of self an ebook version of this workbook excuse me, the science of sex. And this topic goes hand in hand with what we are talking about here. And let me just show you guys a quick um, shot of it. <clears throat> this is the actual work workbook. And uh, let's see. It's 43 pages. <clears throat> and it is highly intensive and full of information about the subject of sex. So from uh, the first subject is how we see ourselves sexually as a society and then feeling bliss beyond sex, cultivating an understanding of male anatomy and sexual energy, understanding hormones and the influence on sexual on human behavior, cultivating an understanding of uh, let's do this. Cultivating an understanding of female. <clears throat> anatomy and sexual energy, relationship goals, prana, proper breathing techniques and energy cultivation, and then body goals. Now I put it, I put this workbook out in conjunction with this video because number one, this is a subject that is near and dear to my heart. I do bear the responsibility and take it seriously of helping to edify the mindset of um, my people of women and of the culture in general and i take it very seriously right so that's part of it uh you know wanting to do the video but then the second thing is i am a writer people have been asking me to talk about this subject asking me to write about this subject okay well i put together some content it's not going to be the full it's not the full scope of the book that i'm going to eventually write on the science of sex that book is going to take some time but i put together a workbook that is a consensus of the topics that I'm going to talk about here and things that as a culture we need to start being mindful of. So, excuse me, it's on my website right now. I just put it up before I put this, you know, started doing this content. The ebook for the next 48 hours is going to be on sale for $9.95, $9.95 or $10. The actual workbook is going to is available for pre-order and it's available on my website right now for $14.95 for the next 48 hours. If you appreciate the level of content that I'm getting ready to present to you, and if you appreciate the topic of the science of sex and you understand the severity and the importance of this conversation, and if you actually support me, please take a second, you can pause right now, click the link in the description, and you can go make your purchase right now. And then turn around and share that information on your social media sites because this is a conversation that needs to be had and that is not being had when it comes to the hormonal behavior. Uh, activity that happens that affects your actual behavior when it comes to the male-female dichotomy, when it comes to the urban language that we use and how detrimental it is between the male-female relationship, when it comes to seeing yourself through the relationships that you actually attract, that's what this workbook is about. It's 43 pages, full color. Again, you can purchase the ebook version and you can download it right now. And I'm going to tell, I just told you what the actual topics were, and I'm going to have little bits and pieces that I cover um, throughout this presentation. I am also going to do short two minute intermission, intermissions during this process. So, number one, I can take a break from my voice and, you know, go use the restroom or do whatever I need to do, but so that you can also take a break and stop. Click the link in my just in the description and go and actually purchase this workbook to support to elevate the consciousness in your family and in your community. And I wrote this workbook in a way that young people can actually embrace and understand. So it's for them, but it's also for all of us as well. So again, I'm going to keep reiterating this after this after, throughout this process because I want to keep doing high levels of content, but I cannot and I will not work for free. So I want to warn everybody that there are going to be um, images and language um, that's going to be used, including by me, um, that is going to be um, explicit. Um, but it's really the only way that I can do this in the proper way. I have to talk the language 
uh, I don't have to talk the language, but I am going to speak the language because it's relative to the conversation that's being had. People don't want you to use the word hoe. Okay, well, what's a good word to replace that? Whore, it's the same thing. Um, so I am gonna use curse words um, in order to repeat certain lyrics and also to convey a message that I need to convey um, to speak to the spirit of the culture. So parental discretion is advised. Um, if you send this to your children or if you watch this with them, I'm just giving you guys a head, heads up that this is going to be a raw and real conversation. So first, why is this conversation necessary? Hang on, I think my screen was off. <laughs> I gave the warning, you saw that, okay. Support my work. I think I was only on me. So just so you guys know the whole frequency, you love me, but do you support my work? Make sure you buy the ebook version of the book or the actual printed version. Warning, graphic language and imagery, parental discretion is advised. And then here we go, uh, let's get started with this. Why is this conversation necessary, Ms. Zaza Ali? It's the inner hoe is what guides everything. So if you got that inner hoe, then you good. When I was growing up, it was never a good thing being called a hoe. I am comfortable calling myself a hoe. I identify as a hoe at heart. I would describe myself as a sex icon. I'm not a good hoe. My friends will tell you I'm a disappointment to the family. The black community considers a hoe a woman who likes to have sex. But I define hoe as somebody who's like either a female or male who's sexually liberated. They made it a word, they tried to use it against us, try to make us feel bad about ourselves. And I'm just like, wait, I don't feel bad about myself. I feel really strong, I feel empowered. So if you're gonna call me a hoe, I'm gonna call myself a hoe too. Is there a difference between being a hoe and having a hoe phase? First of all, ain't nothing wrong with being a hoe. There's no such thing as a hoe phase because you can hoe forever. I would define a hoe phase as a period in life where there are no Fs given. With no expectations, perhaps. It's a lot of casual sex, um, getting to know yourself, getting to know different people, being sexually free and expressing that within yourself. Getting to know my body and myself more. Black women are often looked at as hypersexual beings. The way our bodies are shaped, the way our music is, I feel like sexuality is ingrained in our culture. I think sexual empowerment is something that the world doesn't know how to interpret for Black women. So like when we do take a uh, like autonomy of our sexuality it's always like you're a hoe you either see these little kim-esque figures you know owning their sexuality talking about the types of sexual experiences they are having on the other end of the spectrum you see the aisha curries of the world a hoe phase can be empowering because for me like i didn't even think I was sexy before I even started having sex. Like, I didn't even think I was beautiful. It really did help me see myself in a different light when I saw like how desirable I was or like just how sexy I could be. Like when I started having sex, I was like, oh my God, like this is so fun. Like, I didn't know I could do all these things. I see myself having a whole face in the future, for sure. I think it's very important for everybody to like explore sexually. You never really know you're in a whole phase until you're like, a few bodies deep and then you're just like oh oh i'm a hoe and then you gotta realize but it's okay there was a time in my life where casual sex was the thing and you know that's all i wanted but i think as long as you're in a good emotional physical place and it's healthy casual sex is cool it can fit a lot of your needs I was often the friend who was um, at the lunch table receiving the host stories and being like, wow, oh my gosh, people do that? What? How did you get them to do? Okay. Interesting. Maybe I should write that down. I think the first step to exploring that side of you would be to talk to your friends, talk about what you're Googling in your porn. You know what I mean? Like talk about it so that you can get comfortable with it. Just know if you want to be a hoe, be a safe hoe, okay? Make sure you have at least two friends that have your location because I know you guys like to travel out of state and not let nobody know where you are. 
tell somebody where you are, please. Men are dangerous. And, and, you know, don't be afraid to just go for it. Our good sis, Cecily Bowen, once said, everybody wants to be a hoe until it's time to hoe. Thank you so much for watching R29 Unbothered on IDTV. So, <laughs> why is this conversation necessary, Mrs. Zaza Ali? Um, <laughs> oh, man, there, there, there's something so unsettling um, about that video. And there's multiple things, and I'm not gonna comb all the way through it because I think it's self-explanatory. But the thing that really stands out to me is number one, after you sit here and excuse or recruit, recuse yourself from defiling yourself in every way possible, publicly, physically, then you turn around and say, men are dangerous. That's like, what? What do you mean, men are dangerous? Like you're dangerous, your mindset is dangerous, and you're on film promoting this madness online to the world, who's to say what young black girl is gonna see you that looks at you and identifies with you and thinks that this behavior is acceptable? I keep saying people are an ecosystem. I'll get into that a little bit more, but this is why this conversation is necessary. This is an email that I received from, hang on, let me make sure my, okay. This is an email that I received from a brother that he had his daughter and his wife attend. And I had told him that I was gonna share this. He sent this to me uh, some time ago. His daughter and his wife attended uh, one of my um, retreats last year and beautiful young sister, you know, beautiful parents, well loved, well cared for, you know what I mean? Like she does not fit the protocol of what we think is wrong with our teenagers. So let's just clear this up up front. This idea that all these fast girls out here that are online twerking and getting caught up in all of this madness or girls without fathers. No, this is the email that I received from this brother. And this was one of many emails. And I'm gonna read part of it to you. He said, um, Nicki Minaj has to stay, well, Nicki Minaj came up, I don't even remember the connotation for that. But he said, my daughter's complete identity is in social media, degenerative images and music lyrics and fake online profiles. I strongly advise her that real life will be completely outside of her device. You are welcome to use any thoughts that I share to benefit or empower others, of course, anonymously. So he told me about the uh, all these different websites that he found in order to uh, uh, do research about social media, about mental illness. Um, he said, as you cover topics that impact mental, female mental health, teenager emotional health, social media and fake online life, consider these social media and smartphone data points for your back pocket references so to say that take the phone that's the answer no it's not because he took her phone he you know he did everything that people automatically say oh it's the parents fault well why didn't you do this well why didn't you he did all of that i had a very extensive back and forth with his brother he knows what he's talking about he did the research again human beings are an ecosystem and our daughters are being affected by the way that our women are carrying themselves. It is so cowardice of us to deny that and to deny our responsibility and our accountability to them. So this is just, you know, that alibi that always comes up about these are girls that don't have fathers in, your, in, in their lives. No, this is not always the case. There are a lot of parents out here that are struggling to learn how to parent in this social media environment and still have, have healthy relationships with their children, they're trying to figure it out. And we're leaving them on their own to figure it out without really contextualizing what's happening to, to our daughters. So to contextualize the behavior that we're about to see, and I didn't go full throttle with showing a lot of videos because I know you guys have seen a lot of this stuff. Um, I'm not sure if you've seen Christian Combs, who is Diddy's son, who I was actually very disappointed about this. Um, the song was one thing, the video was like soft porn or an orgy. Um, it was really just, you know, <coughs> and let me say this, <coughs> excuse me. It's one thing for adults to do the adult things in adult environments, right? 
I'm not the fun police. I'm a grown woman. You know what I'm saying? We all live. We all have fun. We can all do what we want to do with our bodies and with our lives. But once this starts to bleed over into the culture, where now our daughters are looking at this behavior and trying to find themselves in womanhood and trying to find their way, um, this is when it becomes a, an issue. Um, I was very disappointed because I have a lot of respect for Diddy. You know, I you can all you know judge him based on different things, but he seems like he's evolving and he's growing. Granted, I know his son is his own man now. He, you know, he's a grown man. He can pretty much do what he wants to do. But I, again, going back to what I was saying before about hip hop, it's not really geared towards elevating and inspiring women. It's our music. It's our culture. I love it. I have a, you know, a long-standing love, you know, sometimes hate relationship with hip hop. I am a product of hip hop, but it is not a music and a language that speaks to the heart and the soul and the mind of women. It's not. And so the visuals that go with what's being conveyed in the music just really kind of reiterates the point. So to fast forward, the reptilian brain, human beings have three different versions of what we call the brain. There's the reptilian brain, and you guys that watch the Illuminati conspiracy videos, you're familiar with that, it's this part of the brain. The mammalian brain, or the limbic system, which covers the emotions, which is located right here. Um, this is the part of the brain that they say that we share with other mammals. And then this is the human brain, the larger part of the brain that deals with reason, reason the neocortex. So the reptilian brain composed of the basal ganglia and brain, brain stream <clears throat> is involved with primitive drives related to thirst, hunger, sexuality, and territor territoriality, as well as habits and procedural memory. Let me take my screen off so you guys can see this in full. And procedural memory, like putting your keys in the same place every day without thinking about it or riding a bike. So this is a part of the brain that we share with not only other mammals, but with reptiles, insects. Uh, excuse me. Whereas the part 25K challenge is real, I will be picking the top 20 winners. The top 20 winners will get flued out. All expenses is paid for flight, travel, everything we're gonna do a real bit we're gonna shoot a video the challenge is two weeks long it will end on the 23rd i need y'all to get creative i need y'all to shake your ass make sure you hashtag city girls challenge 25k and girl code it's a movie period It has a predominant survival circuit that controls the fight or flight responses of the automatic nervous, aut autonomic, excuse me, nervous system. Our sympathetic nervous system comes into whatever, whenever we face a sudden or imminent threat, like when we are walking on the road and a car suddenly comes in front. 
In such a situation, our body gets a surge of adrenaline and other stress hormones. This surge of adrenaline enables us to act swiftly and respond to danger. Once the danger has subsided, the sympathetic nervous system takes a back seat and parasympathetic nervous system gets into action. It helps us to reward our original state of rest called homeostasis, where we regain our calm and balance. If you have an issue with sitting and listening to people read and listening to people convey information that may be a little bit beyond your understanding, then you should definitely listen to this video. Um, we've gotten so used to seeing and hearing people talk at us and just give their, their opinion that we are losing the ability to discern information, to retain information, and to take information in. So I am intentionally talking about science, talking about psychology, and talking about higher levels of intelligence while I talk about some of this ghetto, ratchet, low vibration, low frequency energy, because we have to get beyond this space where we don't want to read, we don't want to think, and we don't want to have intellectual conversations. But overall, the reptilian brain is only supposed to uh, protect you during times of strain or stress or from danger. Um, it deals in, um, like the previous slide said, you know, sexuality, being hungry and being territorial. And a lot of us are actually living and existing, not just using this when it's necessary, you know, when we're in a situation where we have to procreate or where we have to mate with, a, with, with another man or another woman, or when we have to find food or when we have to be in survival mode, a lot of us are actually living like this. And unfortunately, our music and the society in general is promoting this type of behavior. <laughs> You hear the hot girl and the city boys playing in the background. So when we talk about the reptilian brain, this is on social media. This is, I didn't have to go far to find this. This is right on social media. This woman has her two women. And this is in a club and she's going in this dude's pocket and taking his money. And I don't know if this was scripted or I don't care if it's scripted or not. Either way, it's sickening. They're in a truck on a highway. You talk about the reptilian brain. And there have, like I said, there's, this is not about, you know, grownups not being able to do grown-up things. There was times when, you know, we had the Josephine Bakers of the world. Um, you know, they used to call it the boom boom room back in the day where, you know, we had these really sexually aggressive, you know, uh, environments where people would go and dance and, you know, get their freak on, whatever you want to call it. But even people, it was a, a hidden thing for a while. Like, you know, people didn't even know this stuff existed until later on down the line. And it was never televised. It was never something that was public where people could, you know, watch it and view it and, and judge it and experience it. You can t you can log onto the computer right now and see this on any given day. And both of these videos are on Lil Duvall's page. I follow him because he's funny. Um, he drops jewels sometimes, but this is that truth mixed with falsehood, man. It makes it makes it hard to fully digest anything he says because, and he has a daughter, and he always talks about his daughter. Um, you know, and she's a beautiful young girl. But you know, this 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 energy and this visualization, the reptilian brain um, in full swing, and people think this is cute. This is actually the society and the world that we live in right now. This is a video I've been talking about um, for some time now. This video has been up on YouTube for a long time. This is actually grown men and grown women participating with these little girls that look seven, eight, nine years old. Girls don't even have on panties, shaking their behinds in front of the camera. Grown women, I don't care how ghetto they are. I don't care what, where, I don't care where they, I don't care about none of that. These are our daughters. This video has been online forever. It's called Hut Hut. It's never been taken down. They probably never even received a complaint. So when, when I talk about toxic masculinity and the whole frequency, these are the type of dudes that I'm gonna be talking about. Little girl, little girls.
grown ass men. Grown men. Living like beasts in the field. That's what I see. You say, why do you need to be, why are you talking about this? Why are you, <laughs> why isn't everybody talking about this? Cucumber challenge. This is one of the sickest things I've ever seen in my life. I couldn't even bring myself to put any of those videos up online. And it's not necessary because the pictures convey what is happening. Talk about a whole frequency. Where's the feminist movement on this? Where's the black actresses and celebrities? Jill Scott did a video, but I only think she did a video about this because she felt like she may have been partially responsible because of, you know, the video that was trending about her on stage doing this. And again, when you're performing, you're doing your act and it's, a you know, what you do to make your money, that's one thing. I don't know how she ever thought that that wasn't going to become public, but, you know, <laughs> I just, I don't know. I, I mm. And then some weirdo put this comment up that I'm not going to repeat. I mean, it's just like, what the hell is happening to this culture? And so of course, everybody's favorite slut comes through campaigning for standing up for people doing the cucumber challenge. So I wanted to talk to y'all about this cucumber challenge I've been seeing um, around on Instagram and stuff like that. And I've been seeing a lot of shaming going on and I just think like my personal opinion, like I seen the video and I was like, damn this like, <laughs> like what the they set up like that? Like that's crazy. But then I had asked my man, right? I was like, yo, you know, did you see the cucumber video? He's like, no. Oh, what video? You know, because he didn't know how I was going to react to that or whatever. And he was like, yeah, you know, I seen it or whatever. And I was just like, babe, like, I apologize. Like, my throat is not set up like that. Like, it's just, not, it's like, not, you know, I never got any complaints or anything like that. But I'm like, mm -hmm. damn, bitch. Like, she was just like, oh, Dean on the cucumber. But this is my whole thing. Okay. We all, okay, so this is my whole thing, right? Like, we all suck dick, right? Like, we, like, literally suck dick. Like, everybody's on the internet, like, shaming this girl for, like, sucking a cucumber, and, like, we suck dick, right? Like, I mean, if you're straight or if you're gay or whatever you're into, like, and you suck dick, like, you suck dick, like, why are you mad? that a girl sucked on a cucumber and I feel like a lot of girls are being very insecure because they watch the video and they're just like oh bitch I can't do that like I can't, like I just can't do that like it's just crazy but the thing that we have to remember is that if your man is going and getting you know cheating on you or you know leaving you know, just being disrespectful. You have to understand, baby girl, that don't got shit to do with you. So yeah, that don't have shit to do with you. That don't have shit to do with me. It's just like, it's, it's, we can't be mad when somebody that we love or care about finds something else appealing oh, or can't, sexy. Can't, we can't feel can't, insecure can't, about can't, that I because, can't, I can't. you know, stop. Shut up. I shut feel up. like. Shut up. Stop, stop, please stop, stop. I can't, I can't, stop, stay away from these types, stay away from these idiots. I can't even like, I can't even stomach another 10 seconds. Stay, women, who, do you follow her? If you, if you're watching me right now, do you follow this shit? She said, I, I even just lowering my, I just lost brain cells watching that. I had to apologize to my man. Like, I'm not, my throat's not set up for that. We all do this. Like, listen, <laughs> in this book, um, The White Tigress, 
actually, I don't even need to reference that book. Queens, concubines. I don't know if you guys know what a concubine is. During times when there were actual mar monarchies, concubines were women that would sexually please the king and whoever else he wanted them to sexually please. That was their primary role to be a concubine. They had no input on anything. They had no say so on anything. Their job was to look cute and to sexually please the king and whoever else he, el else he decided. The Amber Roses, the Black Chinas of the world are concubines. You guys are mistaking them for queens. Stop following these idiots. Her conversation and her input and her opinion on popular culture, particularly when it comes to women, particularly when it comes to Black women, should be considered null and void. Stop following this foolishness. All you young women who are listening to me, this is the whole frequency live and in the flesh. And I talked about her before with the slut walk and all this other foolishness. I get, get off my screen. Like I can't even. <laughs> hey guys, it's your girl Amber Rose. And I'm just sitting here on this soft bed thinking about my slut walk this year. I want you ladies to come out and protest against rape culture, sexual violence, slut shaming, victim blaming, and double standards. I want all the misogynistic men to be so f***ing mad this year that we're not only confident in our bodies, but we're confident in our sexuality as well. Oh. Oh. Be mad. Oh, be extra mad. <laughs> So this is the 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 irony and the hypocrisy in this situation. And I'm not even talking to Amber Rose because I have absolutely no, I I wish to appeal to her in no way at all. This is not even about her. She's a caricature. How is it possible that during a time and when the climate is all about rape culture, about objectifying women, about Me Too? about all of this madness that has been inflicted on women, how is it possible that this person, who's clearly trying to weaponize her sexuality, becomes the spokesperson for women? She's talking about rape culture and violence, but then you present yourself in a way that appears to the low nature in man, which means that they only know, a man only knows how to deal with that type of energy sexually. That is the only thing you convey, is sexuality. So how else does a man, interact with a, with, a, with, a, with a fool or a woman like that? Where's the feminist movement? Where's the black celebrities? Where's the black females? Where's the black politicians? Where's the black political pundits about this type of stuff? Do we really wanna heal women or do we just really wanna come together and, and collectively have a trading war stories? conversation. I want to pass up my intermission so I can keep this 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 ball the ball rolling on what it is that I'm trying to convey. City girls, grown ass women walking around singing this song. Real ass bitch give a fuck about a nigga. Big Birkin bag hold five six figures. Stripes on my ass so he call his pussy Tigger. Fucking on a scamming ass rich ass nigga. Same group of bitches ain't no adding to the picture. Drop a couple racks, watch this, watch this ass get bigger. Drinking on liquor and I'm looking at your nigga. If, he, if his money right, he can eat a little snicker. He can eat it like a snicker. I ain't got time for you fake assholes talking all loud in them fake ass clothes. Fake ass shoes match their fake ass gold. I'm the realest bitch ever to shake you snake assholes. To you snake asshole. I mean, this is the bird brain expressing itself with the imagery to match it. Grown ass women walking around singing this song. Club get turned all the way up when this song come on. You driving in a car with your daughter in the back seat with this playing in the background. You haven't even thought about the lyrics and how it's actually gonna impact her. <sighs> Try to calm myself down. I'm fasting, my energy, I just. 
these are the people that are setting the tone for our culture. Our culture is being ran. The concubines have taken over. A prostitute, I got these definitions from Urban Dictionary, and I thought it was appropriate because this is the mind of the hood, which is dictating the, the culture. A prostitute is a woman who sells sex for anything. What is accepted in exchange for sex ranges from money to crack to a job position. I take that. Slut is a, a woman with no morals and no self and no respect for others because of her self-centered point of view. That can be contextualized a little bit, but I'm not here to campaign for women who identify as sluts. And a hoe is a woman who sleeps with a lot of guys, uh, sleeps with a lot of guys, that girl is a hoe. And remember, part two of the whole frequency is going to be talking about men because men can be hoes too. And then here you go. Make sure you get your sweater and walk around conveying this message to prove that you're really down with this foolishness. So this is our model for what a queen is now. This is what a queen looks like now. And you throw on a little, you know, uh, uh, comedic, African-esque, indigenous-esque <clears throat> headwear, necklace wear, put a little bit of nature in the image. And this is your concept and our concept and these girls' concepts of what queen actually is now. I had this conversation with somebody in my um in my inbox on uh on Instagram. He said, he or she said, all women, all girls are meant to be queens. It's all about the way that they're raised and the way that they're me reared. No, they're not. That's not, I mean, it's a it's a nice gesture. Obviously, we want all of our girls and our women to think regal and to think high of themselves. But the term queen comes from a monarchy. The term queen denotes a specific type of woman who is either married to a king or who ascends to a throne through bloodline or who takes the throne through force or whatever political reasons actually elevated her into becoming a queen. I can name off 20 queens that have ruled in indigenous cultures and in, in history's time, including the queen right now in, <clears throat> excuse me, England. So no, all women are not meant to be queens. That doesn't mean that if you're not a queen that you're somehow not important or that you're not valued. All girls are meant, are supposed to be women. All girls are raised and born to be women. That's why womanhood is special. Motherhood is special. Being feminine is special. Being a lady is being special. But all women aren't ladies. All women aren't feminine. They'll all be women. This is our concept of queen now. I had a conversation. Some females got mad on my um, social media pages because I, you know, they at, can you twerk and be a goddess? No. <laughs> Can you can do whatever you want in the privacy of your household. You can do whatever you want in the privacy of your life. But the minute it becomes public, the minute other people are watching you and salivating and judging you and masturbating to you and getting sexually enticed, goddess, that word means something. It has value. You have to aspire to that. Now, can you be... I used to twerk back in the day. I used to strip back in the day. And now I'm aspiring to be a god. Of, of course, that's what this is all about. Trial and error, figuring it out, finding your way. Absolutely. But you can't be presently online shaking your ass in front of a camera and then turning around and calling yourself a goddess. That's disrespectful to the culture. And more importantly, is disrespectful to the creator. And it doesn't even make sense. But this is <laughs> the whole frequency queen, one of them. So she meets these young girls on Ellen.
too cute. And we love that Nikki came to the show last minute to do this. You guys can check out the full video by clicking the link. So when you ask me why, <laughs> why is this conversation important? These are the women that are setting the tone for our culture. And when I say our culture, I'm talking about human culture, period. So this is what I found so interesting. And it's also ironic to me that nobody, I, I haven't seen anybody actually talk about this. And maybe they have, I just haven't seen them. I tune a lot of stuff out. The cover of Paper Magazine, um, she did a spread in Paper Magazine. And I wrote an article about this. Um, you can get find get access to it on my website. But this is her basically playing the role of a menage a trois. Her name is Nikki Minaj. You guys that don't know, menage a trois means having a threesome. So she's playing around with herself and going back and forth with herself <clears throat> as if she's having a menage a trois, right? Now check this out. This article came out November 15th of 2017, right? A week before this, her brother, Jelani Mirage, was convicted of raping an 11-year-old girl. A week before she put, I don't know when she did this, this photo shoot, shoot. I don't know if it was a month before. I don't know if it was a day before. It does not matter. Your brother gets convicted of raping an 11-year-old child. You have a name. Your moniker represents Barbie. You're calling yourself a progenitor of women's empowerment and women's rights. Was there not anything in her mind or in her spirit or in her consciousness or in her team that would tell them that this would, might be inappropriate to put this content out right now, to put something so sexually explicit out, not just because it's on a magazine, but because we live in a world of social media, because she probably has 11 year old followers, because she probably has a lot of little girl followers. Was there nobody that had any sort of sense to say this is not appropriate right now, let's let a little bit of time pass so that you can appear to be sympathetic to the family of this little girl? N no, it was all about press and promo. It was all about changing the dichotomy, changing the narrative so that people aren't focusing on your brother and that people are actually focusing on your ass. This is a, to me, there's such a deep psychological message in this, this is the behavior, the promiscuity, and I don't know if this is her. I'm not, and I said this before, I don't know her story. I don't know what she's been through. I don't know any of that. Her brother was a pedophile. He probably was raped or molested by somebody else. Pedophiles rape, create pedophiles. This is a fact. I don't know if something sexual happened to her or turned her out or what her thing is, but there's a very deep psychological sickness when you as a woman and as a human being who claims to be represent women's rights, which means you naturally stand out and speak up for little girls to make a move like this, you don't need the money, you don't need the attention, you don't need the fame. And you put this kind of imagery out five days after your brother is convicted of molesting, <clears throat> excuse me, an 11 year old, there's a sick psychology pathology to this. And I, I thought this the, immediately when I saw these images and I went back and checked the dates go on it because I had just happened. There's something very wrong with this situation. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Mattel Co, Mattel, excuse me, honors Nicki Minaj with a Barbie doll. Nicki Minaj is both thrilled and proud that toy giant Mattel has crafted a Barbie doll in her likeness for charity, telling Billboard that it's a major moment in her career and a special one for her fans, a dedicated brunch she refers to as Barbies or Barbs. Now you notice they didn't actually create a Barbie doll you know, for her because white people would have went crazy. But they did this to keep Mattel and Barbie relevant in the culture. And she's so happy and so excited. This is a toy and a doll for little girls. And now you, you see all the new dolls. They're spitting them out on a on a automation machine at this point. Cash doll, Asian dolls, doll, Cuban doll, dream doll. I can't, I, I don't, they all look exactly the like. Same caricature, same color scheme. 
This is psychological programming. They've been psychologically programmed and they're now they're continuing to carry the program over. And now you see little young women and little girls looking like this. Because these are the, the, the women that your daughters are looking up to. These are the women that are that are setting the tone for the culture. It was a couple of weeks ago, I think. <clears throat> Nicki Minaj and Meg the Stallion. This is on a, this is not for a show. This is not a presentation on screen. This is not, this is you on Instagram live or whatever live being a hoe. You're not getting paid for this. There's no, you're not doing a concert. You're just being a hoe. Cause that's your frequency. And then you read the comments. Somebody said, Queens, where? It's coming right here. Queens, where? But my question is, and this is something for, you know, I think the lesbianism, and I'm, I think Meg Thee Stallion has a boyfriend, if I understand correctly. Hold on. I don't know a lot about this chick. I'm not even going to lie. I barely heard any of her music. I really only came up on her, you know, I only know her through, uh, um, through, uh, you know, the shade room. And I always see her shaking her ass, which is why she even came up on my radar. That's the only reason I even know of her. I, I, this is not even personal to her. I live your life. I don't even care. I'm talking about a frequency. I'm talking about an energy that keeps regurgitating itself in the minds of our daughters and in the minds of our women. The stupidity, that's what I see. And self-hatred, look at the look on her face. How does this affect the male-female dichotomy? There is a book called How to Text Boys. And one of the women in my private Facebook group posted this, right? Now, I get the reason for a book like this. We live in an era of social media. You know, these girls need to understand how to interact with boys, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm not even mad at, you know, the context of the book, so to speak, helping girls to figure it out. I get it. But there's a couple of things in here, stereotypes and gender in text and face to face. It's something to the effect of um, identity. Opposites attract sometimes. So there's basically this underlying message in certain segments of this book about gender confusion. Maybe you like girls, maybe you like boys, right? This is not a, you know, this is not even about your sexual preference. This is about children and the message that's being re reconveyed, it conveyed to our children. Because what, what's being promoted in this video? Is this bisexuality? Is this lesbian? Both of these chicks got boyfriends. It would be okay if we didn't live in a world full of followers, but we live in a world full of followers. This is dangerous. And now the hot girl summer, if you've seen the videos, hashtag hot girl summer and seen how many, this is how you know this is really a situation. When you see women online really objectifying themselves and making them, themselves look stupid as hell because they're being led and being uh, 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 inspired or persuaded 
by this foolishness. Real ass nigga give a fuck about a bitch. It is what it is. This some five star dick. She a big old freak. It's a must that I hit. It's a hot girl summer, so you know she got it lit. Real ass bitch. She, I can't. This is who y'all follow? This is who y'all aspire to? This is what y'all aspire to? All they talking about is, is prostitution and the whole frequency. And then here's the mind twist. Megan the Stallion gathers hundreds of fans to clean up Santa Monica Pier for first Hottie Beach cleanup. Stop playing. I uh, Talking about global warming. Stop it. This is some very arrogant, vain, come look at me and make it seem like I actually care about the, the and maybe she does care about the planet. She could have showed up in, you know what I'm saying? Some t-shirts and some tennis shoes if that was the case. If she real had, I mean, it's just, I, uh, mm, mm. it's just music, Zaza. Why are you tripping? It's just music, right? In 1995, Dr. Emoto Masaru was the first one to record musical impressions on water. In Dr. Emoto Masaru's laboratory, they allowed water to listen to music, after which they flash froze the water. And then, under the microscope, they could clearly see the crystals that the water had formed. Here is what the music of Bach looks like. Mozart. Beethoven. Heavy rock. Dr. Emoto has conducted another interesting experiment. He placed rice into three glass beakers and covered it with water. And then every day for a month, he said, thank you to one beaker. You're an idiot to the second. And the third one, he completely ignored. After one month, the rice that had been thanked began to ferment, giving off a strong, pleasant aroma. The rice in the second beaker turned black. And the rice that was ignored began to rot. Dr. Emoto thinks that this experiment provides an important lesson especially with regard to how we treat children. We should take care of them, give them attention, and converse with them. Indifference does the greatest harm. There have been many wars on religious ground. That video is critical, and I've used um, Morimoto's, um, you know, uh, studies and science um, over the years to make a lot of different points, uh, because music is just one part of what he's actually studied. Um, but the, the points that he's making in the music, and this is actually scientific, um, you know, the science of this is actually can be verified, is that, you know, what you listen to actually affects the molecular structure of your DNA down to a cellular level. So when people say it's just music, no, it's not just music. And if you look at the condition in our communities, you have to ask yourself and wonder how much you look at people in the hood, the skin is bad, the, the, the face looks sunken in, they look tired, they look depressed, they look worried, they're li living in anxiety, living in fear, living in all this tumultuous energy. You have to wonder the impact that the music is having. And now our music has gone from gang banging and um, fuck the police to whole frequency, to real ass bitch give a fuck about a nigga. What impact is this gonna have on our daughters 10, 20, 30 years from now, five years from now, two years from now. Rock music. I would be really interested to see if he did this study. 
and really anybody can do the study, but you have to have certain kind of magnifying glass to really be able to see the impact that it has to be able to pick up small fragments of water that are being crystallized or that are deteriorating based on the type of music. You have to have a certain type of subatomic magnifying glass in order to be able to do that type of study. What would that do to a water? Your body is 75 to 80% of water. What, what, what is it doing to your child's DNA structure and molecular structure sitting in the back, listening to you, listening to this type of music? So don't tell me it's just music. Music and sound, frequency, vibration, voice, tone, words, is the building structure for everything in the universe and everything that we know to be true. I'm gonna take a short break, rest my voice for a second, get some water, go use the restroom. This is a support intermission. If you like what you've seen so far, if you appreciate the message and it's resonating with you, and you know that this is something that our daughters actually need in order to elevate their consciousness, that our culture actually needs, click the link in the description and purchase my ebook in order to um, help to facilitate a higher level of understanding and a higher level of conversation. And I'll be right back in just a minute. <clears throat> okay so again the whole frequency this is tiana taylor and this is a clip of her on the breakfast club i'm hoping my um i don't get any copywriting issues this was actually reposted on another page so um this isn't the breakfast club's actual video so I'm hoping that it doesn't, uh, I don't get a copyright. If I, if it does get copywritten, then I'll just take it out of the video. But um, this is a song called Three Way that she did. And let me play the interview real quick and then I will, I will, uh, I'll read the, the song. Now people are talking a lot about the, uh, <laughs> the, the Three Way record. Oh Lord. Now you, you opened up your, your life to the world in a major way. Right. Why did you decide to do that joint? Well, I decided to do Three Way because I just felt like you know, after hearing, you know, seven and shit like that, it's to the point where all of our, all of ours, whether it's me or anybody else, all of our love songs is kind of starting to sound alike, mm -hmm. you know, and I wanted to just take it up a notch, like, as far as, like, my lyrical content, you know what I'm saying? It was just like, okay, we know that, touch me, feel me, rub me, you know, mm -hmm. or on a, a, a heartbreak song, is like, I can't eat, you already know, I can't sleep, it's coming next, you know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. So it's just like, what's gonna be different, what's gonna be out the box, what's gonna especially because this album is so dear to me and, and, I, and I, I got more to talk about, is I just wanted to get more creative, you know what I'm saying? And not the typical, what I was already doing, you know, with Seven. It was just time to take it up a notch, like, you know Did you saying? think that was going to have the huge impact that it did with so many Oh, yeah, people? I knew, because right. they wasn't, uh, Ye wasn't really fucking with putting it on an album at first. I was like, no, this thing. Why he didn't want to put this on out? Why not that record? No, they, no it, it was because, it, like, it wasn't nothing, like, about the record that mm -hmm. he didn't like. It was just like, um, I don't know, I guess, what was, was it the most, like, simplified record? Like, it didn't have, like, I guess a lot going on, but I was like, I was like, nah, nigga, this stays, like. Sometimes less is more, though. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, I was like, I was like, this stays. I'm like, I'm telling you, it's, it's going to get people going. It's going to get people moving. You know what I'm saying? Like. How many yeah. people hit y'all up after that? Like, so, I no, know. Man, I'll, be the third, I'll be the third party. Charlamagne, Charlamagne, Charlamagne. This got crazy. Don't do what I'm saying. I'm speaking from the perspective. I did not know what the side chick. We what need that drop mean? right I'm now. I'm speaking from the perspective of another woman. Like, I'm joking. Would y'all invite Charlamagne? Shut up, man. Shut up, man. Sorry, man. Y'all know what I mean. I mean, you know, for, I love that platform because they have, brilliant moments where they do great interviews but it's always perplexing to me why when this kind of subject matter comes up why nobody ever really asks the questions that need to be asked like are you not concerned about the way that this is going to affect people's relationships are you not concerned with sexually transmitted diseases are you not concerned with the way that people you know are going to uh uh project this onto marriage? Are you not concerned with, you know, your your little girls that are your fans and how this is going to affect the way that they see marriage or the way they see how men and women interact? Why? Somebody please hit up the Breakfast Club and ask them that for me. So her lyrics for the song Three Way, Anything for My Baby, I Do Some Crazy Things, 
So whatever you see, I'm I'm holding my head like this, and I, I have a worried look on my face. This reading this shit and, and looking at this this mindset and this energy, it just it really just throws my energy all the way off. And especially because I'm fasting, so I'm super energetically you know sensitive right now. Anything for my baby, I do some crazy things. Yeah. So whatever he wants, he can get that. Long as I like, we can hit that. Hoes, we don't love him. No. Soon as we doing done, she leaving right out the door. If you can keep our freaky secret on the low, we can have a special thing going on. Whoa, this is whole frequency to the fullest, being exemplified by married people. Three-way, I couldn't wait to have you, have it with you, because I know it turns you on, so let's do it, babe, because two heads are better than one. Three-way, I couldn't wait to have it with you. I'm gonna take my skirt off, then she gonna touch me right there. Then it's gonna be your turn. So baby, don't you be scared. We gonna need all your loving. Well, now the breakfast club, what is their responsibility to the culture? For even asking this question without asking it in a culturally responsible way. I think she's a dope dancer. I think she's a dope entertainer. There's a couple of songs I like on her record, but like, this is, and then a couple of weeks, a couple of months later, this happens. A whole big online, I only know about a lot of this stuff because I follow the shade room to stay current with what's happening in pop culture. I don't follow any of these people, but I do stay abreast with what's happening with the culture because these people are the people that are actually shaping and molding the mindsets of our women. Tiana Taylor on Imam Shumper getting porn star pregnant. He knows I will kill him. Why? Because she got pregnant? Or because you didn't know. She took her social media pages off of social media, blah, blah, blah. It's just, <sighs> this is what comes with this energy, though. There's no such thing as casual sex. There's no such thing as random sex partners. You energetically take on the frequency of the people that you share your body and your space with. So they're having a threesome on a physical level, but they're introducing other people into the nature of their relationship. That's how that works. Your favorite rapper. Some of y'all watch her all the time. I don't even can't even begin to fathom how you do that. I think she's funny, but yeah, that's just a little too much ghetto for me in one setting. Um, check this out. This is just a short clip, I promise. Cheat on me. I'm be that guy. I'm gonna take him out. We're gonna get drunk. I'm gonna get him all perked up and everything. We're gonna have a good time. Get him super twisted. Then bring a bitch around. We're gonna have a threesome. And when he wake up, he's gonna be like, what the fuck? Yeah, because the bitch was a tranny. I'm gonna be like, yup. Yup, we had a threesome with a tranny. Yup. Yup, a tranny sucked your dick. You don't gotta fuck another nigga to get even, bitch. There's other ways to get even. <sighs> okay. 
Y'all love this. The culture loves this. This is this is what people are watching. This is what people are following now. This is what we think is actual womanhood and motherhood now. <clears throat> She's pregnant on stage twerking. And then this is her. I'm not even gonna show the video because I it's hard for me to even <laughs> see these people for too long and see this foolishness before it starts to impact me. Um, this is the other video though is of her walking and a dude grabs her ass um, and she gets mad and starts yelling and cussing because somebody grabbed her ass. <clears throat> but when you objectify yourself, what do you expect? Now this wouldn't be such a problem. Here's where the, the programming comes in. She's sitting down having doing an interview with Bernie Sanders. Watch this, just a couple of minutes. There's been a lot of buzz about the relationship between Bernie Sanders, the candidate, and Cardi B, the very popular rapper. She's made her interest in politics well known for a long time. In fact, on the 2016 election night, she was doing political coverage with Jesus and Mara. She also spoke out against Donald Trump for this year's government shutdown, rallying her fans saying they should care about it, just like she said they should get civically engaged and care about the debates. If you was to have a chance to ask one of these Democratic candidates a question, what would your question be? Ask those questions down in my comments, and we are going to try to get them questions answered. And now she is getting some of those questions answered. Cardi B, you should know, has one of the most followed online profiles of anyone in the country. 49 million on Instagram alone. That's larger than NASA's following, which has about 47 million. And she's just behind LeBron James at 51 million people. So when she posts, she actually reaches more people than most TV channels. And that's why her new interview, which puts some of those questions to Bernie Sanders, isn't just a kind of a cultural moment, although it is that. It's also really a political and media event. What are we going to do about wages Good. in America? Good. When I was not famous, I just felt like no matter how, how many jobs I get, I wasn't able to, get, to make any. That is an excellent and important question. Can you imagine somebody today earning $9 an hour? It don't make no sense. No, it doesn't. How do you pay your rent? How do you pay for food? How do you pay for transportation? Right. You can't have You know, certain people like to brag that there is more jobs now in America, but it's like, yeah, there's an increase of jobs given, but what are they paying? Right. And these jobs, they practically pay nothing. You got it. That is exactly the issue. You know, you have a mutual, mutual respect for FDR. I have a couple of reasons why I love FDR. He became a president where when America was in one of its worst times, and not only are you going through a, a depression, but you're also going through World War II. I mean, come on now, he, he did the New Deal. Like, that's the reason we have Social Security. Goddamn, I, I love him. He's my favorite. Well, I want to be your favorite after I'm elected, but we'll see. But thank you so much, Bernie. Thank you so much. <laughs> Let's do the burn. Feel the burn. This is part of where politics is headed. Lose track of it at your own peril. We should note that was recorded at a nail salon in the important primary state of Michigan. And when it comes to your vote, Cardi B might tell you, be careful with it. That's not a threat. It's a warning. Hey, I'm Ari Melber from MSNBC. So you can see more the, of our videos right the, here. The better thing. yet. <clears throat> they make you think that people, these people who have big profiles, celebrities and whatnot, actually have power to make you think that the system actually really works. Now, it wouldn't be such a big problem, number one, if she was well-spoken, but okay, you know, she represents the culture, a certain segment of the culture, so to speak. <clears throat> but here's how you know that, it, you know, it's all programming, because right now, getting ready to be in theaters, she's starring in a movie with Jennifer Lopez called Hustlers. Why Jennifer Lopez would want to do a movie about being a stripper at this stage in her career, I have no idea. I know actress, actors and actresses have their thing. Um, she's a mother. She has a daughter. 
it's just a little perplex perplexing to me but you know to each his own again it wouldn't even be an issue for me if this was not so greatly affecting the culture and then you do an interview with Bernie Sanders. Yeah, motherfuckers go going around showing this, this fucking picture. Now y'all photoshopping it even more. Like, oh, Cardi pussy, Cardi pussy. First of all, that ain't my pussy. My pussy right here. This is where I birthed my daughter from. This right here, the part that shows, you know, when I go like this, that's just my ass. You know when you got a fat ass? That shit gets fat right there. This part right here, this is the part that gives the dick comfort. You know what I'm saying? This is the part that, like, when you go like this in and out, that's what this nigga feel. That's that's my ass. You know what I'm saying? Y'all wanna look at my pussy so bad? Y'all should've went see me when I was a motherfucking stripper and I was promoting myself. Like, come see me. Now, too bad. Now, this is what's this is what's representing the culture. This is who all of the celebrities, all of the women who are promoting. This is what all of your favorite artists are co-signing. You don't want your daughter to be like this, but you co-sign this. This is who is actually setting the tone for the culture and for our women right now. Shit is sickening. I. Uh, <sighs> this is from the Science of Sex workbook. This is a quote from the book. Pay attention to who you share your intimate energy with. Intimacy at this level intertwines your oral energy with the oral energy of the other person. These powerful connections, regardless of how insignificant you think they are, leave spiritual debris particularly within people who do not practice any type of cleansing, physical, emotional, or otherwise. The more you interact intimately with someone, the deeper the connection and the more their aura of their aura is intertwined with yours. Imagine the confused aura of someone who sleeps with multiple people and carries these multiple energies around. What they may not realize is that others can feel that energy which can repel positive energy and attract negative energy into your life. This is why a lot of these women running around here are batshit crazy. Because they sleeping with batshit crazy men. They want to try to be men and have casual sex. There's nothing casual about sex. They say 60% of black women <clears throat> are sexually abused before the age of 18. Right now, I don't know if the statistic is true to life or not. I don't know how accurate this is, but I do know that I have talked to and dealt with a lot of women that are have been sexually abused. I've talked to a lot of women. A lot of these women have very promiscuous energy and very promiscuous natures about themselves. A similar study said that that was conducted by Women's Health Imperative seven years ago found that the number was about 40 percent. I don't know how accurate the number is, but we do know that the behavior that is practiced in this promiscuous environment complements this. Oh, but Zaza, they twerked in Africa. That's what people like to say, which is so damn disrespectful to me. They twerked in Africa, Zaza. Why are you tripping? This came from the motherland. Okay, let's see. When you say that 
this is what we did in Africa. No, the rhythm, the dance and the rhythm and the energy in Africa has a culture to it. Everything that they're wearing, the beads that they're wearing, the dances that they do, the colors that they wear, all of it has a meaning. This is culture. You don't look at this and you see, you don't see sexuality. You don't see, let me hit that. You don't see real ass bitch give a fuck about a nigga when you look at this. This is actual culture. So it's disrespectful when I hear people say twerking started in Africa. No, consciousness started in Africa. Life started in Africa. Spirituality started in Africa. Intellectualism started in Africa. This one thing you want to pinpoint to Africa in order to justify your in being on a whole frequency, but you can't tell, you can't talk about any other thing that's relative to Africa. In the book of Patahotep, he talks about, um, and this is the oldest book in the world. This is a, a spiritual book speaking from the mindset of the creator, talking about receiving wisdom from the, win from the women at the well. This is a king that is uh, uh, going amongst, amongst the regular people, average, not average, but the citizens of the community. And the king is going and meeting the women at the well who go to the well for their water and consulting them for wisdom. The king is meeting with the women at the well to consult them for wisdom, not to see them shake their ass, not to see them do a tutorial about why the meat on the behind and the, and the lips and the, you know what I'm saying? The effect that that has on sex or the, a man's sexual energy or a man's sexual reality. So stop it. It's disrespectful to Africa. It's, it's disrespectful to the culture because you don't represent nothing else about Africa except the fact that they twerk because you want to stick your ass up in front of a camera. One does not build great civilizations that withstand the test of time without abstaining just as much as indulging. This is universal law, meaning you have to be disciplined, meaning there cannot be a sexual free for all, meaning it's not anything goes meaning it's not women can do whatever they want to do with their bodies. No, you cannot. You can, but there's repercussions. That's what abortion is. That's what birth control pills are. Meaning you have to intervene in the science of your body. So naturally you can't just do whatever you want to do. There has to be a scientific intervention for you to do whatever you have to do. That means that there's laws and rules and regu regulations to how we conduct ourselves. Genghis Khan dispatched his daughter. I'm, 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 uh, the situation with my son has me a little bit frazzled. I might have to go back and edit the video now. I didn't want to do that. Um, Genghis Khan, this is from the book, The Secret History of the Mongol Queens. Genghis Khan dispatched his daughter, Al Atun, to the Uyghurs with a clear message. He told her that as a Mongol queen, he gave her three husbands. Her nation was her first husband. Her second husband was her very own reputation. In third place came the earthly man to whom she was married. If you can take your nation as your husband and serve him very carefully, you will earn your reputation. If you take your reputation as your husband and carefully protect it, how can you can the husband who has married you ever forsake you? I need for our daughters and our women to start taking our reputations more serious. According to the FBI, 40 this 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 was misplaced. This was actually supposed to follow the um the uh page that was about uh, molestation. Sex trafficking true victims. Why are black girls and women so vulnerable? According to the FBI, 40% of victims of sex trafficking are African Americans, with that be number being significantly larger in the major metropolitan areas. In Los Angeles County, which is not a predominantly black area, mind you, the African American victim rate reaches 92%. In overwhelming numbers, the persons most likely to be victimized are vulnerable Black girls and Black women. And I think that this, the molestation, um, the sex trafficking industry has a direct tie into the strip culture, um, which is a very prom uh, promiscuous environment, mind you. Um, and now hip hop 
as you're going to see in the next video, uh, whole frequency about, you know, the mass toxic masculinity, um, that strip, strip clubs are actually dictating hip hop culture right now. So that music has a frequency that goes out into our communities, into the clubs, into your car, into your house, when you're getting ready for work, et cetera. It has a frequency that is resonating on a strip club energy. This is from the book, the science, the science of sex, the workbook that you guys hopefully have purchased by now. Understanding sexual horm hormones and the influence on human behavior. I'm almost done guys. Serotonin can make you sexually demure, meaning passive or sexually aggressive and indiscriminate, meaning you don't care. Depending on whether its levels are high or low, low levels, high levels ca call your sex drive, low levels intensify it. That should say quell your sex drive. Low levels intensify it. It qualifies as a neurotransmitter, which means that it helps to transmit signals in your brain from one nerve ending to another. What is this saying? <clears throat> this is a, sex, a hormone that is released when you are sexually stimulated or during the act of sex. It also affects the signals that go from your brain from one nerve ending to another. So it's not, it's not ever just sex. There's a whole, you know, uh, um, system that is being processed during this process, but, or happening during this process, but serotonin <coughs> affects how you relate to sex. If you are highly sexually stimulated or not stimulated at all. Aggressiveness. This is again from the science of sex workbook. Aggressiveness, aggressiveness towards others and self seems to be restrained by increased serotonin levels. Remember, serotonin is affected by which the type of food you eat, um, the type of lifestyle you live, your how much alcohol you intake, the type of drugs you intake, um, you know, your dairy uh, levels, um, your the type of meat you eat, all of that. In animals, high levels of serotonin promotes selectivity in mates. Some species basic heterosexual pattern. When serotonin levels are low, however, the effect can be disturbing. You may become indiscriminately sexual, meaning you'll have sex with anybody. Violent, aggressive, and mean. Reality TV. Low levels in animals induce, along with indiscriminate choice of partner and gender, impulsive behavior and the compulsion for immediate gratification. In fact, when a drug is given to animals to artificially lower their serotonin levels, they will participate in group sex, violently and frenzied, mounting the same sex or the opposite, often harming, sometimes killing others in the process. We are looking at a genetically modified reality, a genetic, genetically modified civilization, and our women are being led, are being influenced, are being... Uh, 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 nurtured and embracing a whole frequency that is destroying them. You said something that really affected me. It, it depends on if your life gets better yeah. or worse yeah. after yeah. having sex with that person. And that's how you know the effect that had the sex that had on you. You're dealing with a transference of energy. If I'm with her, I'm downloading energy into her, not just the physical uh, semen, but I'm downloading my energy, the essence of who I am as a man, and she uploads into me. So I take her energy. If your life gets better, that would be the definition of good vagina. After he was intimate with her, her life got better. Things started to go great. So evidently he put good energy into her life. So, so interesting. On the contrary, if your life gets worse. There have been times where I've had sex with someone and I feel terrible after. Mm -hmm. Maybe in the moment you may feel good, but if you're miserable all the time. Did your, does your life get better <laughs> by being with this person? Did things get better for you? Emotional energy in itself, it's neutral. It's the feel, let me bring the screen back up so you guys can see this image. This energy transference image, Im image. And I talk about this in my first workbook, The Science of Self, but 
Again, all of this is in the science of sex. I talk about all of this and related to your actual personal life, things that you've been through, trauma that you've been experiencing that you don't really understand why you're experiencing these things. It's the people that we latch ourselves onto. You see these energetic transferences and these are just people that are coming in contact with each other in an inter, inner, not even having physical touch and they're exchanging energy. Imagine what's happening when you are laying down, having a, phys a physical transference of energy. And yes, it's the man transferring or transmitting his energy into the woman, but the woman is also transferring and transmitting energy into the man. DNA fluids are being exchanged. Aura, auric energy is being exchanged. The stress that she feels from trauma that she had from being raped some other time is being exchanged. The hatred he feels for his mother is being exchanged. All that built up trauma and energy that we don't use, that we don't process, that we don't heal from, we give it to one another. This is why our communities are so in shambles. We're downloading constant trauma. Her name was Sarah Bartman, daughter of South Africa. She went to Europe willingly, thinking she would find riches and fame. They fooled her. In Europe, she found humiliation, forced to be a spectacle because many of them had never seen a naked black woman's body. They nicknamed her Hot and Tot Venus. They were fascinated by her large, full breast, big hips, buttocks, and big lips. They stared, touched, and laughed. She couldn't really be human because she didn't look like a white woman. Her skin was the deepest shade of the darkest chocolate. Her hair was a thick black cloud on her head. Doctors and medical students scribbled madly in their medical journals descriptions of her body. She was later sold to a circus where she danced naked for the entertainment of white people. In their mind, her large breasts, buttocks, and her elongated labia made her inferior and over died from loneliness, shame, and disease. She had been in Europe for only five years and was only 25 when she died. But her story doesn't end there. Even in death, she wasn't allowed dignity. Europeans were fascinated and obsessed with Sarah Bartman. When she died, they cut out her vagina, her brain, her skeleton, preserved them in jars, and placed them all on display, along with the plaster of her actual body. For 160 years, people could walk into a museum, look at Sarah Bartman's vagina, her brain, her skeleton, and see what she looked like naked. In 1974, they took down the display, but they still kept her remains. It wasn't until 2002 that her remains were returned to her homeland and given a long overdue proper burial. Some would say hot and tight Venus, AKA Sarah Bartman was one of the first video vixens. Before television, before radio, Sarah Bartman became the blueprint for degrading and humiliating the black woman on a worldwide level. Sarah, this one is for you. I will not forget you. I will not allow others to forget you. I will make sure our people remember you and know your name. Black America, I find you guilty of murder. You're slowly killing the black woman with your blatant disrespect for black womanhood. We have pimped our daughters and mothers for platinum record sales, new cars with big rims and mansions, while Eve's daughters drop it like it's hot for crumpled dollar bills and the chance to be nominated the year's best video vixen. We spit on Sarah Barton's memory. And Harriet is turning over in her grave while Sojourner stands at the throne of the Almighty, praying, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. Do you? Do you understand what you have done? What you are doing? How many black women came before you and played the maid and prostitute so you wouldn't have to? How many of us have turned down roles because we valued how the world viewed black women? But not today's daughters. For a few dollars, they feed into America's jungle bunny fantasy, shaking their fangs half naked with a smile upon their faces, but their eyes say, save me, save me from myself. And where is black America? 
we are on the sidelines cheering because baby girl is no longer a resident of the ghetto. She's riding in Bentleys or Benz is draped in furs and diamonds and the record label just bought her a fat house. But have we forgotten? Massa always kept his main hoe close to the big house or a house to call her own as long as she opened the door when he came knocking and he will be coming back. It's so sad. Back then, we were forced to degrade ourselves to the level of being some man's whore. Today, we willingly degrade ourselves. The black woman has become America's number one whore. We fought that label for so many years, but here our daughters came along and solidified the deal. But many of us sold our daughters to them. We sold them for houses with jacuzzi-sized bathtubs and the chance to say, that's my baby on TV. Have we no shame? No guilt? We can't blame the white man for this one. In concert stadiums all over the world, our black men proclaim to the world that his women are bitches and hoes. It's so common, some of us think that this is our name and answer to it. We have forgotten our grandmother's pain, her struggle to carry the burden so we wouldn't have to. Do you hear the ancestors crying out, is this what we died for? I say no. Wake up, black woman. Wake up, black America. Take back your dignity, the power is in your hands. Y'all owe her more than that. Y'all owe the legacy of our ancestors and the women that came before us better than that, more than that. He who is ruled by his appetite belongs to his enemy. That's Patahotep. That's the bottom line. And your appetite could be ruled by money, by fame, by attention, which is a lot of what these women are looking for. Sexual drive. A lot of men are being ruled by their sexual energy. Like she said in the video, this is not on the white man. We can't blame this on the white man, how we conduct ourselves, how we act, how we present ourselves to the world. And for you young women and you, and you, you know, you little girl, uh, you little girls, <laughs> to the young women and to the young girls that are watching this, you know, you can be a boss without having to compromise yourself. You can be a boss and still have your integrity. You can be a boss and not have to objectify yourself. You can be a boss and not have to put your ass in front of the camera and shake it and wiggle and play yourself out. You can be a boss without having to subjectify yourself to inferior men. And you can be a boss without having to objectify yourself to inferior women. We watch some on this, this channel, on this uh, 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 presentation. And I'm not knocking any of those women for going after their, go for their goals and aspirations. They have every right to do that. The only reason I mention any of them is because they are dangerous and the, and the message that they are conveying and the imagery that they are uh, uh, promoting is dangerous to the culture, is dangerous to our daughters. I hate that more women don't talk about this. I hate that women who have these platforms, who they know these girls and these women are listening to them, are promoting this foolishness. Human beings are an equal ecosystem. Women are an ecosystem. Girls look up to women to aspire to womanhood, not just their mothers, not just their aunties, not just their grandmothers, women they can relate to, women they identify with, women they look up to. So it's not just on the parents, it's up to all of us. He who is ruled by his appetite belongs to his enemy. Stop following these clowns, male or female. Aspire to be something beyond just what your physical body is. That's the smallest part of you. It's not hard for a woman to shake up a room with her body. Can you shake up a room with your mind? Can you shift the energy in a room with your consciousness? Can you shift the energy in a man without using your body? Without shaking your ass in front of him? Men don't respect that. Attention and respect are two different things. My workbook, The Science of Sex. How we see ourselves sexually as a society. Feeling bliss beyond sex. Cultivating an understanding of male anatomy and sexual energy. Understanding sexual hormones and the influence on, sex, on human behavior. Cultivating an understanding of female anatomy and sexual energy. Relationship goals and body goals. I wrote this for the culture. 
I wrote this so we can elevate the conversation about sex. I wrote this because this is the stuff you guys ask me for. If you wanna see part two about toxic masculinity and the whole frequency, support the workbook. You can get the ebook right now. It's $9.95 on sale for the next 48 hours. You can purchase, pre-order the physical book, which will ship out September 25th, $14.95 for the next 48 hours. The link is in the description. If you guys support, I'll keep putting this type of content out. If you don't, then it'll be available on my private Facebook page. I appreciate you guys for your time and attention. I'm going to have to go back and edit the video now because I had a couple of hiccups in the background, but it's all good. Um, I want to put something together that is as professional and as true to life as my presentations, um, as I aspire for my presentations to be. Um, I'm fasting, so send me some positive energy and some love, and I send you guys love and positive energy. Peace.